Hey, hope all of you are having a great day. Welcome back to another video uh, on QOTD. Uh, this is the third question. And uh, we had the first two videos on organolithiums. So I thought of mixing things up a bit. And this question is from chromatography. So chromatography is something that not a lot of students practice. So I thought this is a good question that will build a bit of your foundation and maybe test your skills in the field of chromatography or broadly specifying analytical chemistry. Uh, so this question is actually not something that has been framed by me. Uh, this is a question from your TIFR to 2023 examination, um, but a good uh, test of your basic ability to solve chromatography questions. Uh, coming to the question, the question is quite straightforward. It says that in silica gel thin layer chromatography, uh, which compound will have the least retention factor? Okay, I will explain everything about the question and what exactly is the retention factor and uh, what do what does the silica gel exactly mean for those of you who do not have an idea. But those who understand this question and want to give it a try, pause the video right now and attempt the question. So I hope uh, those who wanted to give it a shot have picked out one of the four options. So let me just first give you the correct answer. The correct answer is this amine over here. Okay. now. In silica gel thin layer chromatography, which compound will have the least retention factor? So if uh, now let me just tell you a brief about the basics of your uh, thin layer chromatography. So what exactly happens over here? This silica gel is nothing but your SiO2. Okay, it's silicon silicon dioxide SiO2 dot XH2O. Like there are some X number of water molecules and then it's basically silicon dioxide. Okay, so what happens is basically uh, there is a solvent system which is called as the mobile phase. Okay, so in a chromatography technique, we have a mobile phase and then we have a, a stationary phase. Okay, we have a stationary phase. So this silica or silicon dioxide, it could be aluminum also. So here they have specified silica gel. There is also another gel which is called as alumina. Okay, I'll tell you what exactly is alumina gel and what exactly is silica gel. So uh, silica gel is your SiO2. Okay, and that is a stationary phase in a silica gel chromatography. So when you're carrying out silica gel chromatography, this is your stationary phase and mobile phase is generally non-polar solvents or organic solvents. Okay, you can say they are non-polar or organic solvents. These are our mobile phase. Okay. Now what happens is that Imagine that there is some sort of a system, okay, wherein you add silica, okay, so you add silica over here, okay, you add a lot of silica and then you add the compound, okay, so on this, on top of this, you have the compound. So let's say we have silica over here, okay, and on top, and on top of this, we have the compound. So let me just draw the compound in some other color, um, let's say red, okay, so this is our compound in red. And now what you're going to do is, now we are going to add this mobile phase that is our organic solvent. So let's say now I to this I add the organic solvent. So what happens this the compounds that are there. So it's generally chromatography is used for a mixture of compounds or to purify a compound. So let's say this red uh, mixture that we have that has two compounds. Okay, one of them let's say is this uh, aromatic system and then one is this amine okay one is this aromatic amine and let's say uh, we have naphthalene okay so we have naphthalene and we have this aromatic amine so both of them will basically go at different speeds okay when you add the solvent or you add the organic solvent which is our mobile phase both these compounds will dissolve differently so there are two things that are happening first that this molecule over here is interacting with the stationary phase. Okay, so this molecule will also interact with the stationary phase. And in this case, in the silica gel, what is our stationary phase? Our stationary phase is SiO2. So this molecule over here is interacting with SiO2 and this molecule over here also, let's say is interacting with SiO2 when this is the system. And these two molecules, which are there in this mixture, okay, these two molecules, aromatic amine and naphthalene, which are there in the system, they are also interacting with the mobile phase and mobile phase is an organic solvent. So what happens is because they have different interactions with the stationary phase and different interactions with the mobile phase they will flow through this at a very different rate okay they will flow through this silica gel at a very diff differing rate okay and that rate you can call it as a retention factor okay so how do you calculate the retention factor it's very simple your retention factor there's a simple formula okay your retention factor sometimes uh, this retention factor is also called rf value in fact more commonly it is called as a rf value so this is a uh, distance traveled. Okay. I'll not write the whole definition distance traveled by the compound 
okay distance traveled by any compound x upon distant distance traveled by solvent okay distance traveled by the compound upon distance traveled by the solvent so this is a live example of how a thin layer chromatography looks like so when you carry out the thin layer chromatography you generally observe it under some medium okay like uh, you can say now to detect the compound so let's say this is my silica gel so this plate over here that you can see this is my silica gel plate okay and on this i will do a spotting of the compound spotting means i'll take the compound in a small capillary and i will spot it over here so these are you can say one to six are my compounds so i've spotted the compounds over here one by one and now i want to run it in a particular solvent system that is my mobile phase so and i want to see how far they travel so this over here is let's say the solvent front that means the mobile phase that i was talking about or the organic solvent that i was talking about in a thin layer chromatography organic solvents is taken as a benchmark what it means is first we will see how far the solvent travels in a particular amount of time okay so you can see that a solvent let's say travel to to this particular line that i have drawn over here with the pencil so like i have not drawn this is an image that i have taken but this is how we generally work so this is my solvent front so this i can say is the distance traveled by the solvent okay then i will see how much is the distance traveled by my particular compound so let's say i see this compound over here or let's say i see this compound over here so i see compound number 3 has traveled almost half the distance okay just a hypothetical example so th this is how far my compound has traveled so now if i want to calculate the rf value or the retention factor for this particular compound i will just do what i will do Th like the distance traveled by this compound x so let's say this is 5 uh, 5 mm okay so let's say this distance is equal to 5 mm and let's say my compound has traveled 10 mm so if i sol sorry my sol solvent has traveled 10 mm so let's say this distance is 10 mm so if i want to calculate the rf value i'll just do 5 by 10 and it will be unitless because millimeter millimeter, millimeter and all will cancel out so this will be equal to 0. um your 5 right so this will be equal to 0.5 so i would say that my rf value for this compound number 3 is going to be 0.5 similarly you can see my rf value for compound 2 uh, okay don't get confused compound number 1 is a mixture so it has two compounds like one is this compound and one is this compound so you can see already see that both the compounds will have a different rf value okay so basically that is how you calculate the retention factor so now the question coming back to the question i hope you understood the very basics of it the question says that what which of the four compounds will have the least retention factor so going through these four uh, molecules one thing is very clear that there is something structurally that will help us differentiate differentiate in the retention factor so mobile phase is a organic solvent that means compounds will travel farther if they are or if they are non polar in nature because organic solvents in generally we will use as hexane ethyl acetate so they prefer so the mobile phase will prefer non polar molecules or okay so for example in these four th four molecules you can see this is the more no, most non polar so this will like to travel with the solvent okay now and now if you look at the other three compounds th what happens is that amines in general they are known to bind to silica okay so silica is essentially slightly acidic and this is i would just want to add one thing that this is a very easy question for someone who has done thin layer chromatography practically because these are very um mm, no very well known factors that amines sort of like get bound to the stationary phase that is they get bound to the silica so a lot of times when you are doing purification of amines uh m m a very large number of times or a majority of time it happens that the amine gets stuck in the silica and then you need to uh, make the mobile phase very very polar that means you need to add polar organic solvents um just to get that amine back because it gets stuck now why it amines generally get stuck is because of a lot of factors one is that it is acidic in nature the silica is acidic in nature and amines are basic in nature so naturally they have a, some sort of attraction like acidic compound or basic compound they have some sort of attraction but a more major factor is hydrogen bonding so if you look at silica so if if i actually uh, show you a very um, like a very simplistic example so silica basically is bound to let's say the the, the surface uh, over here and then it has oh points okay like it has oh right 
and now your amine basically your nh2 it can hydrogen bond in two ways it can act as a acceptor it can act as a hydrogen bond acceptor this nitrogen can act as a hydrogen bond acceptor and this hydrogen over here can act as a hydrogen bond donor so it can act as a acceptor also it can act as a donor also so it, it can basically participate in multiple ways in hydrogen bonding and that is why it sort of tightly binds to the stationary phase so if you look at the molecules that were given over here it is a very clear example that this will have the least retention factor your amine because if you compare it with let's say your methoxy group also methoxy group is also can a hydrogen bond that is true but then if you see it has only a hydrogen bond acceptor it does not have a hydrogen bond donor if you look at nh2 it has a hydrogen bond acceptor also it has a hydrogen bond donor also and apart from that you will see that comparatively it has two aromatic groups fused together uh, if you compare this molecule with this molecule here we just have one aromatic group right so technically first of all this is this binds very strongly to the stationary phase and then it is not a very non polar molecule also so it will not really travel with the mobile phase also so that is the reason why this is going to be the correct answer okay so it is very easy to differentiate obviously when they want to test your knowledge they will give you very clear cut examples because if they give you let's say another amine uh, over here with let's say three carbons okay instead of two carbons uh, there there might be let's say a phenyl group and three carbons and nh2 they will not give you questions like this because it will it is very difficult to differentiate so there should be a very clear cut distinction uh, among the molecules on how you are going to differentiate between their rf values okay so you will not get questions like this even if you get in the csr exam or the gate exam or any competitive exam there will be a very clear cut difference i hope you understood right so uh, and now talking about what is the difference between silica and alumina gel alumina gel, gel is generally considered to be neutral like i said silica gel is acidic so alumina gel is considered to be neutral or basic in nature so there are two kinds of alumina gel uh, one is called neutral in nature and one is called basic in nature so generally if you want to purify amines um you would prefer a alumina gel or a, a basic uh, alumina gel not a silica gel because like i said some amines uh, are known to decompose also or even bind to the silica gel and then it is very difficult to extract them later on so that is why sometimes you prefer alumina gel so alumina gel is nothing but aluminum oxide so silica gel is si silicon uh, silicon oxide and alumina gel is aluminum oxide that's the uh, only difference so remember the 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 uh, molecules that are um, polar and are more likely to bind to the silica using hydrogen bonding or some other uh, um, you know uh, non covalent interactions uh they would basically uh, have a very low rf value or low retention factor and you also now know how to calculate retention factor given you know how much a molecule has traveled and how much the solvent or the mobile phase has traveled okay if you have any feedback re related to the video do let me know down in the comment section because uh, that will help me improve my teaching and uh, maybe i need to uh, uh maybe i'm teaching quick, uh, too quickly or maybe i am um going a little too fast or maybe i'm not simplifying enough so if you feel uh, any of these uh, if you have any of these issues or some other issues please do let me know i always uh, um i'm all ears to constructive feedback and const uh, constructive criticism okay so do let me know i'll try and incorporate uh, whatever you suggest to the best of my abilities in the coming videos um so that's it for now um thank you for watching i will see you in the next video um take care and bye bye